نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brothers and sisters in Islam has blessed the human being with a great fadl and ni'ma the ability of articulation and speech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book Alam naj'al lahu 'aynayn wa lisanan wa shafatayn wa hadaynahu an-najadayn that he has given for the human being since we have given to the human being a pair of eyes and two lips a tongue and shown him two paths wa hadaynahu an-najadayn and showed him two paths in this particular ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying for us and showing us that he has given us this ni'ma of speech he's given the human being something called lisan the tongue and this piece of flesh that we have that is considered part of our bodies is the same piece of flesh that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the ajam or the ajma the arabs call those animals which walk on fours or on twos or on threes those things that crawl upon and walk upon the earth the arab and the lugha of the arab and the language of the arab people they call these what we call in english the dumb animals they call them ajma ajma or ajam as the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said al ajma al ajma aqluha jubar that there is no deer for the person injured or killed by an animal meaning there is no blood money for a person who's accidentally injured or killed by an animal that's not being taken care of or that someone has not taken the responsibility to control Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has separated the human being from the animals and one of the abraz wa a'zam mumayyizat al-insan one of the most highest forms of distinction and honor the greatest form of distinction the trait that separates us one of the greatest traits that separates us from the animals is the ability to speak the ability to use the same piece of flesh that the cow has that the donkey has that the pig has that the dog has the human being has a lisan and they have a lisan we have a tongue and they have a tongue but allah azza wa jal has endowed the human being with the ability to articulate with his tongue and to communicate with his tongue this is a great ni'ma from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> the animals as we already know any sensible person knows this they not only don't have the ability to speak though allah has given them the ability to communicate they're not able to say to their master or anyone who walks by them i want to sleep right now leave me alone i want to eat that grass over there 
I want you to take some of my milk to use it for your benefit. They don't have this ability. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enriched us with this boon. He's bestowed on us this benefaction. He has graced us with this ni'mah, which is called the tongue, and gives us the ability to use this tongue to articulate and enunciate those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to enunciate and articulate in a clear, communicable type of communication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book in Surah Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an, allama al-Qur'an, khalaqa al-insan, allamahu al-bayan. Allah says, Ar-Rahman, allama al-Qur'an, he taught him the Qur'an. خلق الإنسان He created the human being علمه البيان Allah says He taught the human being البيان This word البيان that Allah used out of His infinite wisdom in the Quran and He could have used another word but this particular word البيان comes from the verb that signifies or indicates that the person who has bayan means he can yubinu ma fi anfusihim or ma fi nafsihi. He can clarify and elucidate that which is inside of himself. This is something that separates us from the linguistic meaning of al bayan. It means that the individual has the ability to communicate that which is inside of himself clearly and lucidly, of which, of course, the, in- the animals don't have the ability to do. This particular ayah, brothers and sisters in Islam, shows us the ni'mah that Allah has given us. And this is why he continues throughout the chapter, throughout the surah, saying, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ And which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? One of the greatest favors that he's given us is the favor of the tongue. So this favor that Allah has given us, and what we mean by us, we mean all human beings. He's given it to the mu'min, he's given it to the kafir, he's given it to the salih, and he's given it to the talih. He's given it to the righteous person, he's given it to the wicked person. The same tongue, the ability to articulate and speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to show us one of the importances of having an articulate tongue, he said on the tongue of Musa, he said in the Quran, by utilizing the tongue of Musa when he was sent to Fir'aun وَأَخِي هَارُونُ وَهُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا And my brother Harun is more eloquent than me in speech. He asked Allah to send him as a wazir to send his brother Harun because as some of the tafsirs of Quran say that he was more eloquent in speech and in other narrations of the tafsir of Quran, it says that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had a piece of something on his tongue because of putting a hot coal on his tongue. As we know from the story that Musa used to sit on the lap of Fir'aun and used to pull his beard and smack him in the face, alhamdulillah. And then when Fir'aun realized that he was different. He said, I'm going to do something to this boy. And of course the story goes on by saying that his wife said, no, he's no different from any other boy. And she gave him the test that Allah tested him with by putting a coal and a date or a coal and a jewel in front of him. And then he chose the one that the angel moved his hand to to not expose him as being a prophet. And he burnt his tongue. And this is why he says, وَحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي And loosen the knot from my tongue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had him say, وَأَخِي هَارُونُ وَهُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا Give me my brother Harun, Aaron, because he is أَفْصَح He's more فَسِيح He's more eloquent than me in speech. This is something that is a great ni'mah from Allah to have eloquence of speech. Something that Allah has given all of us, even the kuffar. One of the proofs that the people who are among the kuffar have this ability, and obviously, fasaha, or eloquence, 
is something that is a bounty that has been bestowed upon both the Muslim and the Kafir. One of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed on even the kuffar is that when you listen to the kuffar and the munafiqun, when they're dazzling you and amazing you with their speech, like Louis Farrakhan for instance, you listen to them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ يُعْجِبُكَ أَجَسَامُهُمْ وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ And when you see them, their bodies and their figures please you. And when they speak, you listen to their words. And we can use the example of Farrakhan because this man is one of the most afsah, without a doubt, one of the most eloquent people on the face of the planet Earth. And Allah knows best. But what he's saying with this lisan, with this tongue, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has told us that a human being will say something and that thing that he's saying he has no regard for and it will send him, flinging him into the hellfire, sabaina kharifa, for 70 autumn seasons. For a period of 70 autumn seasons, the human being, the slave of Allah, will say things with their tongue, not taking any regard for what they're saying. Allah is a man, Allah has a son, Allah has a mother, Allah has a father. The most eloquent of human beings, and Allah knows best. But what he's saying will cast him, if he doesn't repent by shahada, if he doesn't repent by shahada, will cast him into the hellfire, showing us the distance and the depth of this um, a hawiyah the source of the abyss of the fire, the bottom is fit for 70 kharifa, 70 fall seasons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in His glorious book, showing us the eloquence, the loquaciousness of the kuffar in their arguing. وَقَالُوا أَآلِهَتُنَا خَيْرٌ أَمْرُوا مَا ضَرَبُوهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَدَلًا بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ خَصِمُونَ are their gods better or is he? How the pagans used to argue with the prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا ضَرَبُوهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَدَلَ They raised no objection. They didn't say these things which they were quoting except for an argument. Except for an argument. But no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are the most contentious, most quarrelsome of people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's described these individuals, the kuffar and the munafiqun, as quarrelsome, as contentious, as argumentative. He shows that they have the ability of speech, the ability of eloquence, the ability of loquaciousness, but they in fact are only doing it to dumbfound you and confuse you and to make you go into the hellfire of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to go to the opposite direction, which is the jannah. Allah also describes that those individuals who bear witness, bear witness using Allah as a witness to what they are saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they say something that is with their mouths, bearing witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bears witness to what they're saying, and what is in their chest is worse than what comes out of their mouths with their tongues. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from this. So brothers and sisters in Islam, this particular piece of flesh of which inshallah the following Jumu'ah and if Allah wills be Mashiachillah by His will, the following Jumu'ah after that for the next two or three weeks, we would like to talk about speech and silence. Speech and silence. Not the fact that speech is better than silence, nor the issue of silence is better than speech. But when should we speak? And when should we be silent? And when should we speak good? And when silence is good? These are the issues we like to talk about, inshallah, for the next two or three Jumu'ahs. Because for surety, the speech that is the worst of speeches is that which is spoken against Allah without justification or authority. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مِنَ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِرَةِ who is worse 
than he that forges or invents a lie on Allah when he's been invited to Islam. And the Prophet Alayhi Salaam says in an authentic tradition collected by Imam Muslim, lying on me, Al Kadib, Laysa Kakadiban Ala Ahad. That lying on me, Al Kamaqal Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That lying on me is not like lying on anyone else. So the worst type of usage of the tongue is to say something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to say something about the messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam alayhi that is against them or that is not befitting for them. And even saying something against the Sahaba as some of the Muslims unfortunately have been tricked by their nafs or shaitan to curse the Sahaba, to revile the Sahaba, to chide and rebuke the Sahaba saying things about them that they have no justification. As Umar ibn Abdul Aziz رضي الله عنه said when he was asked about that fitna that happened between Muawiyah and Ali رضي الله عنهما may Allah be pleased with both of them he said تلك الفتنة قد طهر الله منا منها قد طهر الله منها سيوفنا وأيدينا أفلا نطهر منها ألسنتنا he said رضي الله عنه Allah has already purified our swords in our hands from that particular fitna. Shouldn't we purify our tongues? Allah has already purified by restricting us from fighting each other our swords in our hands. Now shouldn't we purify our tongues? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ثم أما بعد. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the utilization of the tongue is a matter of salvation or damnation. Those of us who desire to have the attributes of those whom Allah سبحانه وتعالى says will be into his jannah. Those of us who are Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger alayhi salatu salam has said, Al-Muslimu man salima muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi. That the Muslim is one whom Muslims, showing the description of the Muslimun, the Muslim is one whom the Muslims are safe from his lisan and his yad, his tongue and his hand. This is what we should be striving for with this instrument called the lisan. We should be striving to purify it, to cleanse it of all types of filth. The scholars of Islam say that there are only two types of speech. And the third type that some other scholars of Islam add to it is only either one, a division of one or the other. There is only good speech and there is only bad speech. That speech that they call in between, that has no good or no bad, is, is in actuality a form of either the first or the second. The scholars of Islam have informed us that an individual can be entered into the state of Islam by one statement. No rituals have to be performed except for that one statement. The person doesn't have to be taken into the dark room and hoodwinked and beat over his head and say Boaz or Haram or Bif or anything like this. He doesn't have to go through the two, two lines of individuals and be beat as in some gangs in California perform their initiations, the person only has to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And the person enters Islam. The Prophet وسلم, said, Man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah. Whoever says with their tongue one small statement, La ilaha illallah, they receive salvation, they enter into the paradise. And they also receive protection in this life. For the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أُقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I have been ordered to fight people until they bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a deed except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah 
And to make the salah and to establish the zakah. And the Prophet said, فَإِن فَعَلُوا ذَلِكْ And if they do that, عَسَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ Then their blood and their property become safe from me. In other words, if a person simply says, La ilaha illallah with their tongue, all of their being in this dunya becomes safe. But as for the person who doesn't say it, the Prophet ﷺ's companion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when he heard the Prophet ﷺ say, whoever says, La ilaha illallah enters Jannah, he, radiallahu anhu, said, and whoever does not say, La ilaha illallah, they will enter into the hellfire. So one statement, brothers and sisters, is of the most extreme importance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two angels by the description of Raqib and Atid that write down every single thing that we say with our tongues. Every single thing that we say with our tongues, the angels write it down. One of the tabi'un named Tawus, radiallahu anhu, when Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, was sick, he entered into the room of Imam Ahmed and he heard him moaning and groaning from the sickness. And Tawus radiallahu anhu said, Inna anin al marid yuktabu alayhi fa amsak an al anin. He said that the moaning and groaning of the sick person, his groaning and moaning is written against him. Just say, Oh, mm, every single thing the human being says with his mouth and with his tongue is written. Everything. Even the moaning and the groaning of the sick individual. Nothing, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in His glorious book, nothing is left out. Not one statement, not one statement is left out. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that a person should not speak words. لا لا تتكلمن بكلام تعتذر به عند الناس Don't say things that eventually you have to apologize for in front of people. We should be very careful with our tongues. And one of the great scholars of Islam whose name was Astamar Qandi رحمه الله He said in his book تنبيه الغافلي ينبغي للمسلم أن يحاسب نفسه في الدنيا قبل أن يحاسب في الآخرة لأن حساب الدنيا أيسر من لسان الآخرة حساب الآخرة وحفظ اللسان في الدنيا أيسر من ندامة الآخرة الله أكبر He said it is incumbent for the Muslim to take account to reckon his nafs himself in the dunya before he will be taken account in the next life because the account and the reckoning of the dunya is easier than the account and the reckoning of the akhirah. And the protection and guarding of the tongue in the dunya is easier than remorse and regret in the next life. So brothers and sisters in Islam, we should be very careful to keep our tongue purified, to keep our tongue safe, from saying things that will give us no benefit to guard our tongues from making iftira making fabrications lying on Allah and His Messenger lying on the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een lying on each other backbiting committing slander spreading fitna because for surety as the Prophet والسلام, when he was asked عن أكثر ما يدخل الناس الجنة what is the thing out of all the things? The thing that most, in most cases, in the majority of the cases, will send a person to the Jannah. What is that thing, O Messenger of Allah, that will send the human being into them, admit them as a denizen of the Garden of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ said, Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. Taqwa of Allah and good character. And then when he was asked about أَكْثَرُ مَا يُدْخِلُ النَّاسِ النَّارِ 
the thing that most likely would send the person to the hellfire. The Prophet وسلم, said, Al Ajwafan, the two openings. Al Ajwafan, Al Sam, Wal Farj, the mouth and the private parts. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تأخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تقتلنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين